The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Soybean School. Uh, The 2020 harvest is done, and uh, as we move into the new year, uh, we'll be digging into some yield and production data uh, to see what we learn from the uh, soybean harvest in Ontario in 2020. And one guy who always has data insights to share with us is uh, Aaron Brimer. He's uh, with Devron. He manages the Data Insights Group. Aaron, thanks for stopping by. Great to have you on Soybean School. Thanks, Bernard. Um, always uh, enjoy uh, chatting with you as well as your audience. And uh, like you said, everyone uh, seems to know that I have data and I love to share data. I'm a numbers guy. You're a numbers guy, and let's talk some numbers. Hey, um, today uh, we're going to look at some data uh, from your clients on pre-planned tillage in soybeans versus no-till. And uh, this really goes back to the fall of 2019 when uh, a late harvest uh, meant that a lot of farmers – had a lot of corn residue to manage this spring. Exactly. Uh, actually, to be fair, it actually goes back a couple years before. In 2017 and 2018, we were getting called out to a lot of fields, soybean fields, that were showing some some interesting problems. Um, and we diagnosed them as uh, being uh, related to compaction. So when in the fall of 2019, when if nobody remembers what 2019 was like, it was a challenge to get everything off and uh, fall tillage uh, done properly, so it, it was a bit of a challenge. And so we had some growers wanting to do spring tillage on to manage the, the corn stock residue and to be able to plant soybeans into that. So uh, that was uh, what set us up for uh, some interesting data. Yeah. Now, typically, when growers opt for tillage, it, it's vertical uh, you know, a, a vertical tillage tool or a high-speed disc. And, uh, but you point out there's a big difference here. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because I think back, I think about 15 years ago was the first time I started to hear the term vertical tillage. And at the time, it had a very clean and clear definition. And it was basically um, coulter uh, type uh, machines. And it was actually coming from uh, Western Canada in a lot of cases. Um, but what we have seen is an evolution of the equipment over the last couple of years where it's more of a, a European speed disc design that has been coming in. Uh, um, and and it's a combination quite often uh, between the two. And, uh, yeah, so it, it is uh, the, the true vertical till um, uses strictly coulters, whereas the high-speed discs are using more of a disc-type uh, approach. Yeah, and for you, I mean, you know, as I say, that that coulter versus disc, it really comes down to compaction, right? One hundred percent. I'm trying to think when it was uh, first uh, um, discovered from the agronomy researchers that discs were a great way to cause uh, compaction. That concave uh, appearance of a disc that allows the downward pressure as well as sideways uh, pressure on the soil. And uh, so when you have both downward and sideways, it adds to a lot more compaction. And compaction, ultimately what it is, is it's just compressing the soil into a, uh, um, a smaller area. So it's squeezing out the, the air pockets. It's uh, um, breaking down the, um, the, st- the structure of the soil. So you have that – we talk bulk density. It basically increases the bulk density. There's more soil for the same uh, amount of area. So the soil is just tighter together. And that's ultimately what compaction is. And when you run into com- compaction, you run into yield loss for those very things you talked about. And, hey, so, so let's look at some data here. Um, we have uh, six sites where a spring tillage pass using a high-speed disc was compared to no-till. And uh, tell us about this data and what you learned. You were surprised here. You were expecting to see, to see something different. 100%. For those of you uh, uh, that are listening that don't know uh, my background, my father started uh, no-tilling back in 1986. His first uh, um, large acres of no-till soybeans was back in 1991. So no-till is in my blood. Um, and then when you take in what I had seen in 2017 and 2018 with a lot of compaction – from uh, these high-speed discs on uh, uh, farms that were going into soybeans, 
I really expected that we were going to be seeing a yield drag in uh, um, 2020 from these high speed desks compared to uh, high speed desks compared to to no tell. Um, so yeah, I was really surprised uh, by the results. Um, I, th I believe we've got the results up right now, and uh, um, six different sites scattered throughout our uh, territory: um, Chatham, Kent, Huron County, Middlesex, um, as far over into into eastern Ontario as well. Um, and consistent, with the exception of I think I believe one case, um, a consistent yield increase from that speed desk. Um, and in all of these cases, they were speed desks. They were not true vertical tillage. Um, they were all speed desks. And we consistently seen a significant, like a big yield bump. If someone had told me that maybe one to two bushel increase in soybeans, yeah, I would believe that I'd say, well, it's year, it may be year dependent. But wow, like when you're talking an average of six bushels per acre on soybeans, that's big money. So Aaron, what's the takeaway here from your data? Um, it looks like the uh, the yield risk of cold wet soils and, and coal and no tilts, you know, uh, stocks outweighs the potential risk uh, of tillage compaction. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, thirty years of my uh, experience has been with no till. Um, I'm a strong believer in the value of no till, but. Every no-till farmer that I've uh, met knows the challenges that they have, that that ground stays colder, stays wetter longer. Um, an interesting, uh, completely useless, uh, well, no, actually it is useful uh, fact, is that moisture, like so water, will hold heat or absorb heat almost 3,000 times more than air. So when you have uh, wet soils, it's going to stay cooler longer. That residue makes things uh, um, uh, wetter longer. And so the question is, is how do you dry it out? So if you, let's face it, 2020, thanks to the fall of 2019, we had to do some tillage, right? I didn't think it was going to pay. I was wrong. Right. So uh, some of your uh, audience is going to love to hear an agronomist actually admit that they were wrong. But this is why we why we test and what, uh, what how we learn. So when I look at all of this uh, data, tillage to be able to manage corn stalks is important. I would suggest that managing that residue in the fall is better than managing it in the spring. Now, I also know from experience that certain soil types in the spring, they still seal up, even if you do manage that residue in the, in the fall. So the question becomes, how do you manage it in the spring? And obviously, if it's a late spring and things are nice and warm, you probably don't have to. And in fact, if you do till it, it'll be back to 2017, 2018, when we've seen the impact of speed deaths and the amount of compaction they were creating. However, on an earlier year, we just need to tickle it, just tickle that surface just a little bit to get a little bit of heat, a little bit of warmth into that soil. And actually, one of the pieces of equipment that I've been kind of interested because I get to spend some time in Western Canada, um, is the Phoenix Harrow system. Um, at first, I thought maybe something as light as a, a rotary hoe might work. I don't think that's quite strong enough. I do. Uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, vertical till um, speed discs in the in the spring. But I think maybe a Phoenix Harrow, just something to break that surface tension up a little bit, that might be something that would be very interesting to test. And plus, if we get to test it, then you get to invite me back next year. <laughs> For sure. I'm going to have you back anyway. Aaron, hey, some great insights here on soybeans and tillage. Uh, looking forward to some more data in the new year. We'll catch up with you then. <laughs> 